Um, yeah. Hello everyone, welcome to this IFAJ webinar broadcasted to you from Sweden. Uh, my name is Linda Grimstedt, I'm the editor-in-chief of a Swedish dairy magazine and I'm also member of the board of the Swedish Guild. And uh, with me here today I've got Anna Larsen, she's also a board member and she's supposed to be all of you today. So her, her role is to ask all the questions that you would have liked to ask during this presentation. Uh, I'm going to talk about a course that we did in Sweden a few years ago uh, when we asked uh, journalists from other media groups to come and learn more about agriculture. It was a crash course for newbies. And you can see some of the pictures here with the participants. And this is me. And this is what we're going to talk about. Our idea was that journalists need to know more about agriculture. We also knew that media companies has tight budgets for education and that most of them also have a hard time letting staff go away for a week to learn more about agriculture, for instance. Uh, and journalists also demand objectivity. They would not have come if it was the Farmers Federation of Sweden that invited them to this. So what we did was to uh, design a crash course for newbies and we invited all journalists in Sweden to participate. We had an advertising in the, um, uh, in the journalist press. Um, and since media companies has tight budgets for education, we applied for external funding to do this because we wanted everyone to be able to participate, uh, no matter where in Sweden they lived, uh, no matter the budget of the media company or if they were freelancers. <clears throat> so uh, we were fortunate enough to have the Royal Academy of Swedish Agriculture and Forestry to finance this. And we also uh, choose to start on a Wednesday afternoon uh, and then they had a full Thursday and uh, half a Friday and then they could travel home. So they could end their work on Wednesday, <clears throat> come to uh, the place where we had a course and then have two days away from work only. Uh, and we also thought that us as journalists, uh, that we were a great um, uh, that we were a great garant for the objectivity that the others would need. And we also had a setup where we provided both sides of the story. You will learn more about that later. Uh, the <clears throat> setup was very basic. Uh, we stayed at a farm stay. So it was a big house. They got to share, share rooms which uh, frightened some of them, but it turned out very well in the, in the end. And they had cattle grazing outside uh, and they had chicken and it was perfect roads for long runs and walks. Uh, very beautiful, everything. Uh, we were also able to have uh, the dinners there, cook for us, ourselves. Even if the food was catered, we had to do the final preparations and we could sit up uh, for long nights and drink wine together. Um, the education itself was held just a few kilometers away at uh, an egg center in Sweden called Vrieta, where um, many companies in the egg sector uh, has uh, sort of a cluster and they also have an agricultural college. Uh, this made it easier for our speakers to attend since many of them had their offices at Vrieta. Uh, and we also invited uh, local authorities to come and speak. And it also uh, made the grand finale that you will see later possible. 
We also had a, a practice session in this course in six farms. We're asked to welcome journalists two by two for half a day uh, for on-hand farm experience. And the thought was that they needed to uh, get a grip on what kind of work that is actually done on different farms. It was, it was pig farms, it was dairy farms, it was a sheep farm. Um, and also that they, during some kind of, um, uh, had an, do, sorry, but the, the, the thought was that they were able to ask farmers questions while they were working uh, about things that they had learned during, earlier during the day. So if someone had told them that a farmer always does this or that, uh, they were able to ask them while cleaning out a, a, a calf pin or uh, uh, going through the canola field. Is this re really true? And the farmer was at ease with that this was not an interview situation, that they were able to speak freely and not being recorded or quoted. Anna, do you have any questions? Yes, at this I, I, do. I, was, I was thinking about the farmers uh, that uh, took in your journalist uh, two by two. It uh, sounds like a great setup just to have two persons on your farm to take care of for a day. How did they um, feel about, um, I mean, sometimes in the farming or the agriculture community, we think that the, the city people don't know anything about our jobs and maybe it's vice versa. How how did the farmer um, react to um, afterwards having these journalists on site? Were they surprised by their knowledge or did you have any response from the farmers afterwards? That's actually a good question that we didn't ask. <laughs> um, but I think that, that all the farmers were, were proud to, to show the journalists their farms. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they kind of shared our picture that uh, people need to be educated. And the only thing, the only way to do this is to actually kind of take down those barriers uh, mm -hmm. so that uh, farmers doesn't sit on their side and think, oh, the people doesn't know anything about what I do. And journalists think, oh, this, that's a suspicious group of people. <laughs> Um, so, uh, and, and the journalists were instructed that things that you see and hear when, while you are on the farm uh, is not to be publicated uh, straight away. In, in that case, you will need to have to ask the farmer uh, because this is, this is a, a, a setup uh, of trust where you are invited and they will speak freely, but uh, in, in this particular situation, uh, you have to put a bit of your journalist role aside. Of course, if they would have discovered a scandal, no one would have blamed them for reporting on it, but kind of see yourself as a, a, a pupil rather than a journalist while you're on the farm. Mm. Oh, and maybe this is uh, going ahead of time, but when you, since you had those long nights uh, <laughs> sitting, having dinner together after this day without the farmer, did you, um, were you surprised by the, the journalists, uh, the new in agriculture journalists? Um, uh, how did they experience the days at the farm? Was it like you had imagined or was it even better? Or how, how did they? Uh, I think we will have some, <laughs> I think we will have some quotes from the participants uh, later in the presentation. So mm -hmm. that might uh, answer your questions. Uh, and we also had help from uh, local agricultural journalists to find these farms so that we knew that these were good farms that were able to speak for themselves. No, good. Um, yes, journalists like headlines. Uh, so to inspire the journalists to uh, go home and find their own stories, we tried to have each block uh, during these two days under a headline. And you will see some of the headlines here. Uh, they're translated from Swedish, so they're much better in Swedish than in English, but you <laughs> kind of get the idea. Um, and the thought was that they 
should be able to come home and say, I want to write a story called The Farmer's Year, uh, based on the knowledge that you got during uh, that presentation. Uh, and you would, all, of course, have to ask your uh, local people uh, and do the research yourself in your own region, but you would kind of get some inspiration from each session. So we started with a farmer's year, very, very basic, and I think it was a uh, rural advisor that explained about cropping, administration, trading, stock handling, what happens on a farm during one year. Uh, then we had uh, a session on the green business, what happens once the farmer's produce has left the farm? How does dairy <coughs> dairies work? How does um, uh, cropping companies work? Uh, how do they deal with the, the groceries or the supermarkets uh, to put the, the, the produce on the shelves? Uh, then we had a session uh, about subsidies, which is within the European Union and many other countries, a, a very important part of the farmer's income. Uh, we had a session on Swedish animal welfare, and this was the most <laughs> in my perspective, interesting session, because this was the inspector talking, the, the local uh, authority veterinarian that goes out on the farms and does the controls. And uh, in Sweden, and I guess in many other countries, are uh, often criticized to be uh, uh, of being too hard, to not know enough about the animals, to uh, uh, to make a hard time on the farmers, but they gave their view. What are the rules? How do we do these inspections? And what is the outcome? Uh, then we had a headline that's much better in Sweden, uh, Swedish. It's uh, self-sufficing or self-suffering. Uh, the thought was, is, is it a, a, free, a free and nice and easy way to be a farmer? Or is it just that you're alone and suffering on your farm? Go out, find it for yourself. Uh, this is the part where they went out on the farms. Uh, then we had to take up the uh, question about organic or conventional, conventional farming. Um, we had a farmer that has both practices on his farm, now, of course, in different companies. Uh, and he said, talked about is, is organic better than conventional farming? Or is it just a way of getting more money <laughs> into your farm? Uh, and ha how he thought that these two practices interacted. And th then the last part of was about farm machinery and how advanced it really is these days. Uh, it's not, not just a tractor. And the grand finale of the course was that they got to drive a self-driven <laughs> driven tractor, a ride in a self-driven tractor, which was highly appreciated. Any questions from you, Anna? Oh, I'm there. <laughs> no, I'm just uh, thinking I would I would have loved to join this course. <laughs> actually, uh, actually, the Swedish um, uh, Melissa, who is uh, now uh, head of the Swedish bo the board in the guild, she went to this course. So this was her start. <laughs> oh, she had started a bit earlier, but anyway, she was one of the participants. And I can I can imagine there was a lot of thought, uh, a lot of planning ahead on this course. But um, yeah, I will we'll we'll see in the end of the course how pleased you are with it. But I can imagine it's uh, it's uh, it's a great way for anyone in uh, Europe or or other parts of the world to uh, cop not copy paste, but uh, be quite inspired by those uh, points that you took out, like the. <laughs> Yes, you're, you're, you're allowed to copy paste as much as you want to. <laughs> um, a bit about the hangouts, because that's always important. We had, as I said, two catered dinners, so we uh, ordered the food, but we had to prepare it ourselves. And during the first uh, night, uh, or oh, second night, we had uh, local farmers invited for a barbecue. And you can see one of them to the very left with a red sweater, sweater over his shoulders. And uh, the point was that, and, and one of them was uh, head of the, the group where farmers can call if they have any trouble. If there are animal rights activists or if you had a... Uh, 
well, if you had a, an animal welfare situation on your farm and, and you're not able to, to kind of uh, get out of it yourself and you need, a, you need a hand from someone, you can call on this group. Uh, and they gave the other side of the story from the, the, the veterinarian earlier during the day uh, about the inspections, the animal welfare inspections and how they can be, uh, how, how the uh, farmers can see those inspections. So this is this was an example of where the uh, journalists got the two sides of the story and they found it very interesting because they thought well it must be as the authorities say and the farmers say well you can look at it, at it in this way uh, which was thought to give them a idea of when they see those protocols coming from the authorities they could ask themselves the question is there more to this story than what I read from these papers. So they get to hang out in a relaxed atmosphere and beautiful surroundings. And um, yeah, I think everyone, everyone really appreciated it, this. Can I, can I ask a question? Uh, yes. how, many were, um, how many journalists did you, uh, were you able to accept? It seems like a lot of people, but some of them are farmers as well, right? But how many? Yes. How 12. many this was on the course? Twelve. Twelve. That's and great. we had a, we actually had a waiting list. Oh. So uh, we were, uh, it was a great interest. Mm, nice. Um, these are some of the pictures that the uh, participants took. <laughs> you can see that they had a good time. <laughs> and what did they did they think? Uh, they said the farmers were wonderful. Five, five hours at the farm was pure luxury. Uh, it was a great difference, maybe a healthy one, between that uh, what a farmer, the farmer told us, and what the veterinarian had said earlier during the day. A lot of information, but I think you managed to get us all interested, and in that there will be stories. Extremely well planned course. Nice leaders and speakers and I was one of the leaders. <laughs> Valuable insights in how things work with cropping and so on, knowledge that I can use in future interviews. So they were very satisfied, and they should be. So something about the money then, 12 participants all over the country. As you know, Sweden is a, a, a long country, uh, so there's quite some distance to travel. Uh, two course leaders that were journalists from the uh, from the guild uh, during two and a half day. Uh, so we had some costs for planning, uh, and we had some uh, travel and transport, uh, which was actually uh, the main part in this because. Uh, we paid for all the flights, for instance. Uh, some One of the participants came from the very top of Sweden and had to go by plane. Uh, sorry, my phone is ringing. <laughs> um, we also had a conference room and we had the accommodation. Uh, we offered the farms uh, money to take on uh, the journalists, but only one of them actually send an invoice in the end. Then we had the course leaders. We had to, to take two days off from our ordinary work and uh, had to uh, be compensated for that. Uh, then we had the food and drinks, we had the advertising, which is always a costly one, and the total cost ended up at uh, approximately about uh, 11,000 euros and the, I think the participants they paid 50 euros so there wasn't too much but just to uh, emphasize that uh, you lose something if you don't show up. <laughs> of course. Um, yes and mm. this was it from <coughs> me so Anna do you have any questions? Oh, I do have a whole list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can, I can, I have, I have two ones. Um, I imagine if I would, uh, if I would arrange a course like this, it would be nice to hear what, what two, two questions. What were you most pleased with after, after this course as a, 
leader and uh, arranger of this course and what were you most surprised about? Oh, good questions. Um, first of all, uh, what I was most pleased with was that everything worked so well. Everybody showed up. Uh, all the farms were able to take on the participants in the end. Uh, nobody got sick or ill or injured themselves uh, and the food arrived when it was supposed to and everything uh, and the second thing i think was the great interest that so many actually wanted to attend this uh, so it was a kind of a receipt on that we were right people want to know about this and uh, and uh, I think the uh, the ag sector, the, the the speakers that we asked, they were also uh, like, yes, oh, what a great idea! Of course, I I will come. Just say when. Mm -hmm. So so uh, I think it was a success uh, in in many ways. Mm -hmm. uh, second question: What was I most surprised about? Uh, I think I don't think I was surprised. I knew that these people that would come wouldn't have. Uh, too much knowledge about the ag sector and that was the whole reason that we made this course um so no maybe maybe i was surprised that it all worked so well <laughs> that we hoped for <laughs> all the practical stuff yeah that's mm -hmm. good you were yes yeah, seems like a great concept <laughs> okay yeah interesting so... interesting to hear about Thank you, Anna, and thank you, everybody else that's been listening to this presentation. <clears throat> I hope you could, uh, you have survived our accent. Uh, you should know that we haven't been speaking to uh, people at all for the last year, and <laughs> uh, especially not in English. So if you have any further questions, if something wasn't uh, clear enough, just drop me an email and I will be happy to provide you with all the information that I have. Take care of yourselves and hope to see you all soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Um, are there any, I have a question to start it off. So having done it once, would you do it again? Yes, we would like to do it again. Uh, what we did, because we had some money left actually from the funding that we got, so the, the year after we did a, a similar course on forestry. Uh, and that was also very appreciated. And uh, now it's, uh, we, we do have a um, institute in Sweden for professional development for journalists and they have actually taken over. So they are running this annually with the same leader that we had. Uh, but uh, within their organization, and, and I think that that's really the best that some that we showed how it could be done, and they uh, took on and doing it. Uh, so if we had uh, more time <laughs> and uh, were able to get the funding again, we would love to do it again. I think it's repeatable. And if you were to do it again, it, what what would you do differently? What would you improve? Um, probably nothing. <laughs> I think I think we were quite happy with uh, how it all worked out. Uh, I think I think this was a um, I think this was a good setup. And have you heard back from any of the participants? Did they have they changed the way they think? Have they changed jobs? Have they any well, feedback? Well, actually. Um, one of the participants, and she was already into agriculture, but had just started reporting on ag agriculture. Uh, she is uh, now the chairman of the Swedish Guild. <laughs> ah, yeah. That's, uh... So that's quite good. I, I, I know um, one of them um, took on the headline of the year on the farm uh, on my recommendation because I've done it before for my local newspaper, where she followed a farm for one year. Uh, and uh, reported uh, continuously, like in, I don't know, 10 episodes or something for her local newspaper. Uh, so that was a very uh, uh, straightforward uh, thing that came out okay. of the, the course. 
Are there any questions from the audience in the chat box or you can open your mic and ask Linda directly? Do you have any recommendations for other guilds that might want to run a similar type program? Are there things they should be aware of? Mm, well, the, the first thing I, I would say is just go for it. Uh, if you if you kind of set a date and you start advertising, then you kind of have to follow through and actually right. do it. And uh, it, it's not that complicated. Um, I guess that the, the, the thing is, uh, of course, finance, uh, you either have to find a way to do it quite cheap, uh, or get someone to pay for it. And if you get someone to pay for it, I think you are the most important guarantee for the journalists that this was, is not going to be a sponsored thing or uh, so on. So you, you are kind of the, the garant for the ob objectivity as journalists. And um, uh, otherwise, just have fun and don't be afraid to do it low cost. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's cozy and it's familiar and I think uh, it's appreciated uh, to, to be able to do it in yeah, just a familiar way. Can I ask something? Yes, please. Uh, when you do this course, uh, last December? Or... I Actually, a, a few years ago, oh, time yeah. flies. <laughs> yeah, because now it's a problem uh, because of the restriction of coronavirus. So, mm. yes, do you have any courses now? Or <laughs> uh, now, what we're planning to do is we, we're thinking about this: how to do it uh, easier and cheaper, and maybe less time consuming for us so we're not actually at the moment applying for funds uh, for, to do like a uh, agricultural journalist day in sweden that we think could uh, gather uh, speakers uh, during one day and it could be online and it could be uh, physical if we're allowed to <laughs> um where we would be able to to um focus on agricultural journalism and invite uh, other media to attend uh, and they were thinking about maybe we could have a, some kind of prize or something <laughs> to kind of get a bit of glamour also. Uh, you should I invite them all. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I think that uh, uh, that uh, just online uh, uh, to, to, to speak like this, it's okay. But uh, if you don't feel the farmer, the, the, the life on farm, it's not the same. No. So, yeah. yeah, I actually think that this uh, uh, opportunity to spend, uh, in this case, five hours on a farm uh, and uh, in that very, only two, two journalists with one farmer, uh, I think that was the best part of it, and the the, the part that uh, actually made made them uh, get them the most bit of understanding, because most of them have never had never been on a farm before. Uh, but it was good to have the speakers before, so they had a little bit of background and uh, were able to to ask questions like. Uh, the, the advisor said this, do you practice that? Or the veterinarian said this, uh, is it really true that? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, good. And so to... Go ahead. It's the same in our country. The veterinarian and inspectors are very strictly, mm. sometimes they are not reasonable. Mm. Mm. Do you have uh, a big losses in farming now because of coronavirus? How do you mean? Because it's no tur no tourist uh, no tourist come arrives in the country. Uh, in our country now, the people uh, spend less food. Mm. I think in Sweden the discussion has been that uh, now that people are eating at home more, 
uh, they tend to buy more local produce and, uh, and um, meat from Sweden, dairy products from Sweden, rather than when they were eating out in restaurants and uh, most of the meat and dairy was imported. So uh, meat prices in Sweden are quite uh, big, uh, high at the slaughterhouses at the moment. So farmers are making money. Good. Mm. Yeah. Not in our country. <laughs> no, but we're yeah. not big in export on, on, on beef. Uh, and uh, and meat. We we uh, are net importers usually. Yeah. Now we we uh, buy more from Sweden. So good for the Swedish farmers. Yeah. And any other questions from the audience? Just uh, to let you know. Yeah. Oh, just, Morten, go ahead. Yeah. Just a small question. Um, from your experience, Linda, what do you think is the most important thing? general journalists has to learn uh, to be uh, diving into the world of agriculture? Oh, I think for some of them, it's, it's this that they, they need to kind of have a, a farmer to hold hands with. They uh, get to know a farmer uh, uh, because I think some of them tend to look at farming as a uh, environmental problem rather than a solution and also about animal welfare of course and uh, that you need a bit of background to see that that farming is complicated and that there are multiple layers so if you have a report that says oh farming uh, have so much green gas emissions uh, you need to know that hmm but what what kind of solution does farming provide and what do we get out of these greenhouse emissions because we have everybody has to live and then and, and you do have some emissions mm -hmm. uh, also with like when you're reading an inspection report on a farm and it says well they had uh, dirty animals and if you go uh, just put up the phone and call the farmer and ask why did you have dirty animals so well maybe it was because uh, they had just been out playing in the mud I don't know <laughs> but so, so that they, are, they, they um, don't go for the first source, which is also well, always a good tip in journalism. But when it comes to farming, my, my uh, experience is that they kind of only use one source, which is strange, but it's true. Do they express any special surprises or new learning points after joining your course? Um, yes, I think uh, this about the, the inspections and the both sides of the stories. I think they were uh, a bit amazed that uh, that uh, they couldn't re uh, rely on the, the official sources like the veterinary inspections and the protocols uh, because we have a very high confidence in Sweden in our authorities. And if one authority says that this is true, we believe in it, as we should. Uh, and I think they were kind of, mm, wow, okay. So uh, they could, it could be something behind that we don't know. And that uh, it's not always that black and white. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have a question from Clem. Clem, do you want to ask your question? Yes. Um, good morning. And I quite appreciate um, uh, your efforts in uh, helping and uh, be a journalist across uh, the world. Um, my name is uh, Clem, as you have rightly you know, uh, said. I'm a journalist, a member of uh, Nigerian Agricultural Journalist in Nigeria. Um, my, my question is, uh, how do we help uh, uh, rural farmers in countries where um, 
the, the efforts of uh, government support in terms of inputs and machinery um, is not getting down to the grassroots farmers. In some zones in the um, uh, developing countries like uh, Nigeria, where the effort of uh, the government at the central is to really enrich the rural farmers. But unfortunately, for political reasons, are not really touching down. And the uh, effort of extension officers, especially private, uh, privately owned NGO, uh, who are coming in to bring light and, and support to this, aggregate uh, these rural farmers and help them access opportunities. Those efforts are, not, are really limited by so many. Okay, my, my, my area, you know, I mean, how can uh, agri-tech, how can we help agri-tech more to bring uh, opportunities for these people to, uh, for them to access direct, you know, uh, resources available from um, donors agencies, from uh, machine organizations, from federal government and bypass all these middlemen. How can develop, I'm speaking on behalf of other developing countries and the underdeveloping countries. What efforts can architect do more for them to bring financial inclusion and bring you know, support services to the rural farmers? Well, I think that's a, a really big question, <laughs> a very important one. Uh, I don't know if, is, is this something you that uh, we should address within the IFAJ for a, a, a session of its own? Because, because I think it's a really, really big it topic. Is, it is. Yes, it is, uh, and we're aware, um, particularly in the developing countries, as you say, Clem, that there are a whole range of issues that are associated not just with agriculture, but with society at large, because the rural population is such a high percentage. Mm -hmm. um, I think in the context of this discussion, uh, it's not a solution by itself, but if uh, you were to uh, try and bring out some of your urban uh, colleagues uh, to the farms, as Linda has done, and to generate some understanding, mm. they then may start to cover these issues with a different perspective. Mm. And as you know, uh, if you have at least some semblance of a free press, that it has some persuasion uh, with the political and the government, as well as it provides information for, for the population. So uh, it may be um, a complementary uh, activity because the question you ask them is huge. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure we have the, the answer, but yes, you, it, something needs to be done. But in this context, if you were to try and engage your uh, non-agricultural colleagues and try and uh, raise their awareness about the issues in agriculture, um, then maybe they would be able to better represent it in the popular press. Thank you. Shahanwari, did I pronounce that right? Uh, yes. You have a question. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Hughes. Uh, this is Shahin, journalist from Bangladesh, South Asian countries. Uh, correctly pointed out, uh, Linda, uh, uh, congratulations and thank you. But I have a recommendation on uh, South Asian countries. Uh, as you uh, earlier mentioned, uh, the, the topic, headline, uh, journalist choice. Here in Bangladesh or India or Sri Lanka, uh, journalists are more uh, emphasis on the price issues or production cost issues and deficit or surplus. As you know, food security and environmental issues in, in Bangladesh or Indian countries or South Asian countries are more vulnerable. So that's why journalists are more focused on these issues, uh, uh, agricultural climatic changes, agricultural human rural uh, uh, changes or challenges. Uh, here we are uh, uh, so many times they're facing these issues. So I think you may add for this uh, South Asian countries, pricing, production costing issues, and inputs management, and climatic changes issues on agriculture. So this is uh, pointed out for your uh, presentation. 
and I have a request for a huge minor. Uh, 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 do you think about uh, South Asian countries for a seminar or uh, workshop for the IFAS Guild member in this region? And uh, that will be very uh, helpful for us, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, wish you good luck, everyone. Okay, thank you for the commentary. Uh, just to inform you that during, uh, because as you know, with COVID, we cannot travel. So the annual Congress for the IFAJ on June 21st, we will be having a full day of webinars with panelists, and we will be talking about some of these issues, climate change and trade in particular. So um, some notices will be coming out shortly with information on that. So we are going to address those, uh, those um, uh, questions. Uh, uh, as to the last part, so this uh, Zoom setup and the services of our office are available to any guild. So if any of your, in your country, if you want to organize a presentation on a certain topic, if you have a particular speaker, we can help you um, uh, make the arrangements for that and do the presentation. Just don't send us a video because we can't show you the video. We, we need to do it live. But um, uh, we're here to help you with those. So if you want to have a particular panel or speaker in Bangladesh or in Nigeria or in um, any other country, uh, we can do that. Next uh, week, we are doing a seminar with uh, the Romanian Guild in uh, Romania and uh, there'll be translation into English. I think there's a notice on Facebook. So we are doing more and more of these things. And then second of all, I would say that um, we uh, have some experience in organizing programs and events. So if you do choose to set up a program um, with your uh, urban or non-agricultural journalists, then by all means get in contact with us and we can help share resources and assist you in the in the planning from a distance, of course, but uh, we can try and do what we can to uh, help you. Definitely, we are most welcome, and we sometimes organize uh, this uh, this type of seminars, workshop in in our countries. Mm -hmm. uh, as as you know, in uh, 2018 and 19. We organize uh, uh, two seminars with our agriculture minister, environment minister, and huge uh, policymakers are present there. Uh, so if you uh, call us, and we will uh, definitely able to organize this type of workshop and seminars. Okay, and just to add that with the Zoom we have, we also have channels for simultaneous translation. So some of your members, their English may not be uh, as good, right? So yes. if you want, if you can provide a translator, we can provide the help, the service, so that if you had, for example, a speaker from the FAO or yes. the United Nations or yes. a global corporation, then we could yes. uh, we could work with you like that. Yes, definitely, definitely. We have a connection with the, the, this type of organization. Okay, good. So. Just let me know and we're happy to uh, try and help uh, with the organization. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we're almost at an hour. Any other last questions for Linda? Otherwise, I'll be happy to answer through email. I think my email address is on the presentation that I think that you will put up on the website. We, we, we will uh, make it available to everybody and, um, and uh, if if there's any questions, they can send you uh, an email. Yeah. Sure. So it is 6 a.m. in Canada. I see the sun is up. Going to go for a walk <laughs> before breakfast. I'm going for lunch. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And uh, we look forward to speaking with you again at the next webinar. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.